TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, your guide to art, culture, and tourism here in Tokyo and throughout Japan. I'm Stuart Monroe, and around this time each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'll be sharing local news and views. On today's episode, springtime in full effect, but first, employment. The Japanese government plans to expand the range of industries that will be covered by a program allowing foreign workers with specified skills to live in the country for longer. The number of employment sectors covered by the Type 2 status will be increased to 11 from the current two, and new additions will include the accommodation, agriculture and food service industries. The current system was introduced in 2019 and awards the Type 1 status to certain skilled workers, while Type 2 is awarded to highly skilled workers who can also act as supervisors. The new plan is aimed at promoting a long-term form of employment to foreign workers that helps resolve the country's labour shortage and its declining birth rate. The government presented the plan on Monday at a meeting of the ruling Liberal Democratic Party with the hope of having it approved this coming June. The yen temporarily hit an eight-year and four-month low against the euro on Tokyo's foreign exchange market yesterday as investors frantically sold the Japanese currency. Monetary tightening continues throughout Europe, while the Bank of Japan plans to continue its policy of monetary easing. It's led to a growing trend of selling the yen, which currently stands at 148 yen per euro, the weakest the yen has been since December 2014. A market source remarked that the US Federal Reserve may cut interest rates in the future, but in Europe there's been no sign of such a movement. It's a monetary policy which differs from that of Japan, and in currency markets this has led to a more attractive euro. Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno confirmed that Japan would deploy its surface-to-air missile defence system, or the Patriot Advanced Capability 3, on two Okinawan islands in readiness for missiles launched from North Korea. The Pac-3 system will be stationed on the islands of Ishigaki and Yonaguni, and comes after the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un issued a go-ahead for the launch of North Korea's first military reconnaissance satellite, 
an announcement which sparked concern that any future long-range missile launch might happen under the guise of launching a satellite. And finally, as the political situation in Sudan rapidly deteriorates, 45 Japanese nationals and their spouses on Monday night left the country aboard a Japanese Self-Defence Forces aircraft bound for Djibouti, bordering both Somalia and Ethiopia. Among the evacuees were non-governmental officials, staff from the Japan International Cooperation Agency or JICA, and workers at the Japanese embassy in the Sudanese capital of Khartoum. Four other Japanese nationals were also evacuated to either Djibouti or Ethiopia, with the help of France and the International Committee of the Red Cross. But several Japanese nationals looking to leave Sudan still remain in the country. I'll be back on Friday with more news, views and field recordings. But in the meantime, if you have any sound you'd like to hear, perhaps a particular place or part of Japan, let us know. You can email the notebook team notebook.podcast at gmail.com or simply leave a voice message at speakpipe.com forward slash notebook. Until next time, thanks for listening.